Right, so Keir Starmer, that Zionist without qualification, still can't form the word ceasefire for Gaza. The button marked, Israel has a right to defend itself, is firmly jammed on. So the only utterance is passing his robotic lips are ones very much in support of the occupiers and not the people whose territories they are occupying and who they are subjugating. Thankfully, not everyone is like him, though. Look at Yemen. Look at the Houthis, who are now giving their own lives to blockade Israeli shipping, with the US there to try and stop them from carrying on. Their little Operation Prosperity Guardians not working out quite as they wished, with several significant nations having dropped out. But hey, on the bright side, the Tories' joke of a defence secretary, today calling himself Grant Shapps, is all for targeting the Houthis with missiles, airstrikes. Let's take the fight to them. Let's spend money doing that. Not humanitarian aid or trying to bring this conflict to an end with BDS or embargoes of our own until Israel stopped committing ethnic cleansing. Oh, no, no. Let's just spend more arms, more public money to attack those who are standing up for Gaza and Palestine and Keir Starmer, the leader who can only lead when led by the nose or holding someone else's hand, who can't seemingly decide anything for himself without focus groups or consultancies, has looked at Grant Shapps of all people and said, yeah, I agree with him. Right, so Keir Starmer, Lord knows regular viewers will know I have pretty much nothing good to say about this horrible little man. This can't lead for toffee, overly ambitious sellout to the Israel lobby and anyone else who is prepared to give him their money, acquiescing to their whims and turning what was once a proper opposition party of the working class and for the working class into the Tory party B team, a bunch of red Tories in charge once more. He's been particularly ripe smelling when it has come to the matter of Israel though. Bought and paid for as he is by the Israel lobby, owes them everything, owes him his leadership. He will never hold Israel to account for what they do, no matter how heinous that might be. And right now, we're witness to some of the worst in living memory, and this dozy twonk couldn't even call for a ceasefire before the Tories went there first. And even when he did, it soon became clear it was more of an ambition that he hoped to see after more humanitarian pauses. Hand out some aid so that Gazans aren't at least being shot on an empty stomach. But given news from the World Food Programme has shown 90% of Gazans have less than one meal a day now, he can't even call for that properly. Some are who are demanding a full ceasefire and are going to inflict their own version of sanctions on Israel, of course, though, are the Houthis of Yemen using drones and speedboats and rockets of their own to put off shipping companies heading to Israel or coming from Israel, causing delays and interference and upsetting the Israeli economy somewhat. It wasn't until the US showed up that anyone actually died over this, and that was several boats full of Houthis themselves. They gave their lives to stop a genocide. The US took their lives, apparently, in support of that genocide. Actions speaking louder than words, after all. And when the US has blocked all political devices from the UN Security Council to bring about an end to the death and destruction, vetoing such matters each and every time, these actions speak very loudly. But of course, it isn't just the US wanting to take it to the Houthis right now, as the Tories do as well. Grant Shapps, if that is his name today, wants to join in with the US by mounting airstrikes on Yemen, saying the Houthis should be under no misunderstanding that they would be held accountable for unlawful seizures and attacks on cargo ships. Unlawful, he says. A bit like Israel's 56-year occupation and current genocide are then, eh? Well, back to Keir Starmer on this. He was doing the Sunday morning politics rounds himself this weekend, and on Sky News it was put to him. Defence Secretary Grant Shapps has said at the start of this week that the UK was willing to take direct action in the Middle East. He was talking about Houthi rebels in the Red Sea. Do you agree with that? Well, as far as the UK goes, speak for yourself, Shapps. We should be sanctioning Israel too until they stop killing people, not threatening those literally doing that with conflict of their own. But Starmer, to little surprise to anybody, said... I agree with the government on this. I'm treading carefully because this is a sensitive issue and we are talking to the government on this. I had a COBRA briefing from the government on Friday about it. That's indicative of the approach I take. When Rishi Sunak became Prime Minister, he and I had a private phone call that evening and I said to him, we will robustly challenge each other uphill and down dale on most things but on national security, on terrorism, on Ukraine because that was a dominant issue then. We will stand as one. Same applies here. So when the government that has already made a statement in relation to what is already happening in the Red Sea, we support that. We will wait to see what next action needs to be taken. National security is the first concern of any government. It will be the first concern of an incoming Labour government, of course. And where action is needed, we are prepared to take it. 
What I don't want to do is sit here getting ahead of the government in an area where I've said, because it's so important, we will, wherever we can work together, so there is one voice coming out of the UK. Doesn't want to get ahead of the government, he says. You're an opposition leader, supposedly. That's exactly what you should be doing every single minute of every single day. You're a sheep man, a follower. The Tories lay things out and you agree with them. From the pandemic where you demanded the schools stayed open just like the Tories did, to this here and now. Consistently Keir Starmer following the Tory line and just like then as now, his choice is costing innocent lives. He has the nerve to mention this matter of striking Yemen as a national security issue to us when it is nothing of the sort. Our shipping in the Red Sea up until now isn't being affected, but you know what will change that? Attacking the people blockading the Israeli shipping. It's Israel today. The US is joining their list too now, I understand, unsurprisingly. Do you want us on the list as well? For what gain? So Israel can keep killing people in Gaza? Because that's what you're doing this for, isn't it? A ceasefire in Gaza is what it will take for the Houthis to pack up, stop and go home. It is that simple. Stop standing by while innocent lives are lost in Gaza and support Israeli withdrawal from Gaza. That's the diplomatic, responsible, international position to take. That would be leadership. Invoking national security here as a reason to support the Tories yet again in doing something that is reprehensible in the Middle East is insulting to anyone with half a brain. As for terrorism, well, if you want an example of that, how about Israel dropping white phosphorus on Gaza on numerous occasions against international law as it is, and just last night, they hit Lebanon with the stuff. Now, I realise you struggle with the concept of international humanitarian law, Keith. You were only a human rights barrister after all, but wake up. Calling for a meaningful ceasefire and standing by that is the action you should have taken weeks ago. Not wringing your hands, waiting to see what the Tories do next before you inevitably just agree with them again. Honestly, I dread to think what the consultancy fees will be to the public purse if and when he becomes Prime Minister, because without somebody telling him what to do, he won't do anything. What the Houthis are doing and other nations who are perhaps taking a more diplomatic stance, but are nonetheless in agreement with regards their opinion of Israel and being on the side of Palestine and Gaza, notably many of the countries in this growing BRICS block of nations, 30,000 people are dead, the vast overwhelming majority of them completely innocent. The UK position seems to be that's not enough yet, because still a meaningful ceasefire call isn't coming from either side of the House of Commons. And this video here will tell you all about what Starmer is in total agreement over. Grant Shapps entering the Middle East pissing contest, frankly. I highly recommend watching it next, of course, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.